Mark II S. This is built on the proven platform of our previously made Mark II. It features the same construction material, the same proven design. The improvements, though, are internal and a few external. We've anodized the body gold to help prevent corrosion and to help the unit in terms of its ability to be cleaned. Helping it to be cleaned will help its repair times if it ever needs to be repaired for those instances when a semi-truck hits it, and yes, this happens, and they still work afterwards. These units are stout, built out of a 2x4 extruded aluminum tube, and then machined to be perfect for the field. To turn the unit on, we simply press the power button. We are presented, upon boot up, with a battery readout and the version of software. There are two software versions available for these units, an advanced version, which this unit has, and a light version. The light version simply reads out a resolution of 0.1 and only allows the user to change the timeout function, which affects how long the unit stays on before turning itself off, and a change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The advanced version, however, contains a much larger list of features. Features that begin with the ability to manually store temperature to a list by pressing, or double pressing, I should say, the power button. When the power button is pressed twice rapidly and you're not in an averaging function already, the words logged appear on the screen. Other features include an auto averaging function. The functions are accessed via the function button, which is represented, represented by the F on the units of this series. The menu system is operated via one simple process. Function button brings you into the menu. You can hold it down and toggle your way through. You can press through. To confirm a selection, you hit the power button. The menu system on this unit is very simple and very intuitive. So, to enable the function system, or, or the auto averaging system, I should say, we simply press the function button. We are presented with the words that say auto, and then we see disabled. Well, we want to enable it. So, to do that, to make a change, we press the power button when we're inside the menu system. So, power to change function to confirm that change, and then we would press escape, but it said clear list, and I want to clear the list because I don't want my average being skewed by any previously stored data. So I'm going to go ahead and change the no to a yes by pressing the power button. Now I'll press function again to confirm that selection, and then escape. It says cleared. After the cleared dis disappears, we are presented with the main screen again, only this time we see three bars that are flashing. This tells us that the auto averaging function is paused and ready to start running. To begin the averaging function, we just simply press the power button twice. Now those bars have turned to a solid. You might notice the Fahrenheit symbol is flashing. That is a feature we built into the units upon user's requests from the field that we give them some sort of secondary method of proving that the device is stable. We kind of call this the ultra-stable indicator. And the reason it's so stable, and I'm right now, is because this particular unit, its probe is sleeved around a three-quarter inch solid piece of stainless steel. During the averaging function, we will see trend arrow indicators. They don't reflect the change here, but they reflect the underlying change of the temperature that it's measuring. If we were find ourselves in an instance where we wanted to pause the auto averaging but not disable it, we can do so by double tapping the power button. We see now that the bars are flashing, and when they are not there, we are seeing our spot temperature. And when they are there, that was our last recorded average, which is being unaffected by it being paused. To resume averaging, we simply return two presses to the power button. To disable the auto averaging function, we simply go back into the menu system, pressing the function button. The first selection is the auto averaging, so we want to disable it, confirming our selection, and we always clear the list. 
and then escape. We see the words cleared and we're back to the main menu. To store temperatures to a list, which this device can do, and it can store several hundred, we simply press the power button twice when it's not averaging. The words logged are repeatedly flashed on the screen for each successive double press. To view that list, we simply go to the function to where it says list, we let up, the first temperature we stored is shown here. We can toggle through them by pressing the power button. Additionally, if we wanted to have an average of the temperatures, we simply press the function button one more time that says display AT. This is the average temperature of the logged values. If we wanted to, we could have hit escape and return and log more. However, I would like to clear the list. So to do that, I press function one more time and I can clear the list pertaining to the manually logged temperatures. I do this so that any in the future, I don't accidentally skew the values I'm recording by having to previously save data. Power to change to yes, function to confirm, and then escape. Cleared. Additionally, a Celsius to Fahrenheit change. Back into the menu system, we find a selection that says degree F. This unit is currently reading out in Fahrenheit, so that is what it is showing. To change it to Celsius, we simply select our power button, press it once, we see it changes to a C. Function to confirm and escape to save. We now see that we're reading 24.47 Celsius. Since I'm used to Fahrenheit, I'm going to switch it back. So once again, function button until we see the DEC, C in this instance, power to change to Fahrenheit, function to confirm, and then escape. Additionally, you may notice that this unit reads to, to a hundredths resolution. Unlike the lighter software version, which is fixed at a tenth, this unit can be changed. So to change the resolution, we go back into the function system, toggling through or holding through until we see our selection. It is the next one after the, set, the, the degree symbol, and it's the DEC. Zero. Well, we want to set it for a tenth out. Power to change, function to save, escape to exit. Now we are reading 79, or excuse me, 76.9. Fair enough. So once again, to change it back, power button to change, function to save, escape. Occasionally, somebody might find themselves in the menu system and they see something they don't recognize. This is one of the reasons why people like the lighter software is they don't have to worry about their guys getting lost in a menu. But if it ever were to happen, the escape button takes you home. So when in doubt, escape out. One other feature we have in here, and this is also included in the lighter software version, is the ability to increase or decrease the delay off function. Currently, the delay off function is set for five minutes. I travel with this unit a lot, so I keep it set for five, but we can set it much higher. Each press of the power button changes the value by five, five minutes. So there's 210 minutes. This unit will stay on for 210 minutes. If we wanted to reduce that back down to say five minutes again, we just go back into this menu system. We find where it says delay decrease and we change it back. Once again, every press is five minutes. Function to confirm, escape. Now, one final feature that isn't often included in these is a test mode. We would recommend that the users purchase a Ranger if they want to conduct a data outstream version, but we will build it into this unit if it is requested. However, the user cannot access the data outport communications module when the unit is in or may be near a potentially hazardous environment, as we cannot guarantee the safety of the device which it's plugged into. To engage the test mode, you would plug it into your computer and set the comm channels appropriately. On this unit, all you would need to do is go into the function or menu system 
to where you see the word test. Then select from off, which press power here to change it to on, then press function and then escape. When the units are in averaging mode and test mode, respectively, they will not power off automatically. This is done so, so that no data could be corrupted. To disable test mode, we simply go back into the menu system, turn the on to off, function, and then escape. So now the unit will time out properly. This unit features 75 foot of lead. The cage is missing from this unit because I was using it with our dry block calibrator. Normally a cage is threaded onto the end here, to the sensor, to protect it. This is our standard probe for this unit. It is a three quarter probe, PRT. And this is the standard cable. The clear cable that is marked internally is also available. 